voices, we want to be heard. Every poem, every story, every sentence, every word. We have something to say, we have something to share. We are raising our voices, because deep down we care. Hey, whoops. <laughs> hey, my name's Dave. D-A-V-E. Just for anyone who wants to know for some reason. <laughs> okay, I'm getting really off topic. So this is my life. Well, this is how I started off. A girl. Surprise. Okay, so I had no idea what the word transgender meant. I ended up finding out about it on the internet. Oh, saviour. Once I did find out, my life changed. For, for the better, I mean. I knew I was uncomfortable most of the time, so I investigated. I searched up transgender and found out about it and the amazing binder. No, not the school one. So after a month of counselling and persuading, I finally got a binder. And even though I thought the counselling was useless, I felt much more comfortable in my body after. A few months later, my parents gifted me with my first shot of manly man juices. No, not steroids, but testosterone. During the next year or so, I faced many taunts, doubts, and even a few thoughts. But I battled through, and boy was it worth it. I finished my course of testosterone and was ready for the next step, chest surgery. With a lot of hard work and a lot of help, I was finally able to do it. So here I am. Dave, no longer a girl, and after a lot of changes, I'm finally happy. We're getting judged if we're fat. We're getting judged if we're thin. We're getting judged by imperfections and the colour of our skin. We're getting judged by our looks or whether we read books. We're getting judged because we're different when our flaws are insignificant. It's good to be different. It means you're unique. It doesn't mean you're a geek. It doesn't mean you're a freak. Apparently words don't hurt. I know that's a lie because I've been that girl who just sits down and cries because of the thoughts running through your mind, wishing that you are no longer alive. It's not time to say goodbye. We'll get through this together, even if it takes time. It shouldn't matter if you're fat. It shouldn't matter if you're thin. It shouldn't matter about imperfections and the colour of our skin. Who cares about your looks or whether you read books? It doesn't matter if you're different. The people who judge are insignificant. Behind closed doors was the monster you've never seen. You were never there. You didn't want to listen. You didn't want to care. You didn't want to believe that there behind closed doors was a monster you've never seen. You didn't know the monster called me names. You didn't know the monster made me feel ashamed. You didn't hear the horrible things the monster yelled. You didn't see the monster hurt me there. There behind closed doors was a monster you've never seen. Every time you see the monster, you see a smile. The monster was so nice. Gentle the monster was acting like he cared. You only saw the outside, not knowing of the monster's bites. I have been burnt inside from this monster for the rest of my life. All because the monster wanted me to be in its life. Behind closed doors was a monster that you've never seen. I hate this. I wake up every morning and it's there. Like a shadow lurking over my shoulder. I fall asleep at night and it's the only thing on my mind, constantly replaying over and over and over until I'm gone. I don't use sleep as sleep anymore. I see it more as an escape from everything, an escape from drowning in a sea of tears, thoughts and all of their built up comments. Sometimes it gets so bad that I wonder what it, what it would be like if the flame was blown out on my candle. If I had a power cut, if the ink ran out of my pen, if my music suddenly stopped playing, if my hand just accidentally slipped off the edge of that cliff, I was so proud that I climbed and slept forever. 
but nobody realises. My thoughts are what's secretly killing me. I mean, if you could read my mind, you'd be in tears. I lost myself along the horrific journey I took to get where I am. And I miss her. I miss the girl I used to be before society decided who I was. I don't remember much about her. I haven't seen her for such a long time. She got lost and manipulated by the darkness. Now the pathetic shell of who she was is scared of the dark, but who isn't? She was a nice girl. She was my friend. She was my sister. She was so happy she had a boyfriend. But the only problem was, he was older, much older than her. Every time she went to see him, he told her not to bring anyone else, so no one really knew what he looked like. After a week being with him, she started changing. She used to love school. That's when I knew something was wrong. She started coming home late. I'm not saying why. She seemed more aggressive. When she finally turned up to school, I saw a bruise on her arm. One night, her and mom had a really big argument about her always coming home late. She told me what they did together was no one else's business and that it was a secret and if she told anyone, he would be really angry. I tried to ask her, but she snapped. This wasn't the girl I used to know. She was very disrespectful to my mum. He wasn't very nice when he was angry. One day, she told me she was going away and wasn't coming back. I saw her packing her bags while I was walking past her room. She told me she was in love. She didn't say where she was going. She said that he was the one she wanted to be with. She was going with him and I couldn't let this happen, but I did. Before she got home, I came in her room and there was nothing there. I didn't know who she was anymore. It was like he did something to her and she was taking around all of us. This time she had done something really bad. She smelled like alcohol. I think he had been hurting her. She'd gone. She was a mess. She didn't like saying goodbye. So she said, never forget me instead. She was never coming back. It was too late. I had the chance to help her, but I didn't. But I didn't. But I didn't. What is your dream man? Is it tall, dark and handsome? Unfortunately, for some girls this is just a dream. In 2014, the Forced Marriage Unit dealt with 1,267 cases of forced marriage in the UK alone. So you may have heard of forced marriage and arranged marriage. Well, they are two very different things. Arranged marriage is when both participants are willing to marry each other. Forced marriage is when one or both participants do not want to marry each other. Forced marriage is illegal. Forcing someone to marry can result in up to seven years in prison. It mainly affects girls but boys can be affected too. So you may be thinking, who forces the marriage? 
It is usually the parents and family. Some do it for the status or the reputation in their community. Some also do it for the money. How do I know whether someone's going through this? Some signs are that young people miss time from school. Some young people are controlled and cannot spend time alone or with friends. Some young people might be anxious about the school holidays. If you have any concerns, tell someone, an adult, a teacher or someone you trust. More harm is done if you keep quiet. Break the silence. Karma Nirvana is a national organisation supporting victims of honour crime and forced marriage. Call on their free friend helpline on 0800 Five nine 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 two four seven. Hello. I need you to do me a favor. Yeah. You not waste my time from self. I need you to do one more thing. What? Kill him for the last time. But this time you won't be alone. Wait, what do you mean, we won't be alone? No questions, just hit me up when you know when and where you're meeting. Wait, Darnell, what do you mean not alone? Hello? Remember that thing I told you about Darnell? Yeah, so, are you going to do it? I don't know man, I think I'm in too deep. Maybe you should just get it over with. I mean, I do love him, so I might probably. Wait, you don't think he's gonna... You know what, forget it, just forget it. Okay. I had believe she was in your DMs, you know? Yeah, yeah. What was she saying to you? Nothing, but you know you're the one for me, man. Obviously, a man like me. Obviously. Anyway, how's your day been, anyway? Good, how's yours? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What? Why you bitch, you set me up! Ah! 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 Your job here is done. You said you weren't gonna hurt him! Get off it, fam! Because the thing is, 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 I don't get it, and I don't understand it, why social media picks my t-shirt size, and why my eyebrows have to be a certain shape. Well, I'm here, trying to figure out my next diet plan. We don't get it, and we don't understand. No, I'm not perfect. Because we give an eye for an eye, the world goes blind to society. But yeah, some people check themselves in the mirror every day whilst the inner self steps out, trying to fix them and they're not changing and they never will. Because the girl next door beat you to it, as you wish you were them. But they are you and they're going for the same problems. Because the girl next door wants your curves to wear that dress you have. That girl wants those glasses. Wants those trainers. Wants those curves. Wants that jacket. But I still don't get it and I still don't understand why we bully each other for each other. I don't think you get it. I don't think you understand, because the thing is, I don't get it, I don't understand why I have to be fat and you're allowed to be skinny, why I get bullied for trying to be you. I'm still stuck. They're pointing. At all your perfections. Or well, I'm still here, trying to fix mine. I'm still trying to fix mine. Trying to fix mine. I'm still trying to fix mine. I'm still trying to fix mine.
The save one attention, you can never be fat. The save one be attractive, you can never be flat. The save one attention, you gotta be pretty. And if you are, you should be adored. But I don't have it all. It makes me feel self-conscious that I don't have it all. But who am I to care because I'm beautiful in every corner from top to bottom, from left to right? Still hurts me said, but I guess it's just a power of words. The save one attention, you're expected to be light. They say if you want to be attractive, you gotta have front and back. It says you're expected to have, to have that figure eight. You must be slim thick. But I don't have it all. It makes me feel self-conscious that I don't have it all. But who am I to care because I'm beautiful in every corner from top to bottom, from left to right? Still hurts me inside. I guess it's just a power of words. You should just suspect others for who you are, for how they look. Because you shouldn't care. You should stop judging others for who they are, for how they look. Check yourself. The power of confidence is what it takes for me to love myself, and I have it all. The power of insult is what it takes for you to lower your self-esteem. But don't have it all. I don't have it all. It makes me feel self-conscious that I don't have it all. But who am I to care because I'm beautiful in every corner from top to bottom, from left to right? It still hurts me inside, but I guess it's just the power of words. Miss, can I go to the toilet? What do you mean you want to go to the toilet? I need to go to the toilet. Olivia, we just had break. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Don't give me that type of attitude, young lady. Can you please sit down? First warning. Okay, class, today we are learning about F, G, M. So, does anyone know? about this. I love hands up, but I'm gonna go for Britney. Um, isn't that the new X-Men movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's the new Britain's Got Talent's girls group. Oh, that's so, so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. Um, Mia. Um, it stands for female genital mutilation. Female, female dinner or what? Mutilation. It means cutting. Yeah. Bad man. <laughs> Just got told. Can you please elaborate? It's the partial or total removal of the female genital organs. And it's taken me, it can take the person years to recover from their experiences. And their parents say it's for their own safety. As always, Mia, giving us a perfect explanation. Thank you. Know it all. Can you please take down notes? Thank you. <coughs> Did you see Charlotte's tweet? Isn't she pregnant? No, she lost the baby. Oh, is that why she's leaving Jordy Shaw? Yep, and Gary weren't even in the country when she lost it. Where was he? We'd have a set of number one. I'm being deadly serious. How long took it off? Check the box. Coming in seven minutes. <laughs> you never saw. Yeah. Leo, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Do you 
were acting all weird to me today. What do you mean by weird? Well, when you were explaining, you said it's taken me a long time. Stop! I'm alright. Everything's alright. I'm your best friend. I know you. I know when you're okay. I know when you're not. Just tell me what's wrong. I've had it done. Haha, <laughs> ha, you shouldn't joke about that. People in some off countries that's the have done to me. It's not a joke. What do you mean by off countries? You know what I mean? Just tell me what's wrong. But well, you're not serious, are you? When? About two years back or summer break. Why? My dad said people would take advantage of me if I did it. But it's wrong, it's illegal. But my dad said it's tradition. And my grandma said I'd finally be pure. We need to tell somebody. We need to tell somebody now. Yeah, but... I guess you're right. But I'm not going by myself. You know I'll come with you. But who are we going to tell? You tell Miss Johnson. You can trust her. Okay. I just want the old you back. Thank you for having me at this very important national FGM conference. I've really enjoyed talking to you all and I know that together we can stop FGM. There is hope.